Hello there friends, welcome to Mid-Morning Manna, coming to you every day Monday through Friday at 10 a.m. And I hope you'll tune in on a daily basis. And if God gives you some thoughts, some ideas, something that blesses your life, I hope you'll hit that share button and share it with your friends on Facebook or that you'll share it on Twitter or we're also on YouTube. And uh, it can be a blessing to so many people. And uh, uh, it's amazing how many different people see these various broadcasts throughout the week. Sometimes it's in the, in the hundreds uh, that people that, that over the course of the week watch the different broadcasts of Mid-Morning Manna. And it's something that can be a help to so many people. At least that's my goal. That's my desire. And as you've noticed, if you've watched this on any length of time, we're not selling anything. We're not, we're not raising money for, any, uh, for anything uh, in particular. We're not asking for offerings. Uh, we're, we're just here to try to be a blessing to God's people on a daily basis. Now, I realize that sometimes people uh, are working at this time. And uh, so they have to watch it later in the day, maybe on their lunch break, or maybe when they get home in the evening, just take 10 minutes, go to the North Harrison Baptist Church page or to the Brother Lonnie page, or uh, just and, and tune in and uh, watch and make a comment, hit the like button or the love button or the hate button or the, hate, or the mad button or something, because sometimes it's mid-morning madness, you know, and uh, so that, that's a good thing to do too. But we've been talking this week, all this week, we've been talking about the wonderful rest of God. Maybe I should have said the rest from God, because it's not, I'm not talking about God's rest. God doesn't ever need any rest, but I'm talking about the peace and the rest that he gives to his children and how he wants to work in your life and help you to have that rest. And I, I want you to notice today how we can witness for God, being a witness for God. See, the main job of every Christian is to be a witness for Christ. And uh, if you can be a soul winner, that's a wonderful thing. That even takes it up another level. But just to be a testimony, to be a witness, to let folks know what you believe and why you believe it, to be able to do that, uh, to, to be able to do that successfully takes a little bit of knowledge on your part and to understand some things. And so as we go through these things, or even as you listen to other Bible teachers and preachers or in your church on Sunday, uh, our Sunday school, it's always a good idea to have a pen handy where you can take down some notes, where you can write down things, or you can, uh, you can underline some things in your Bible or make a note in the margin of your Bible uh, and, and begin to learn and grow in grace so that your life can be a testimony and a witness for Christ. Well, I don't have time today to go back and review all the things that we've uh, talked about this week, the worship, the work, the wicked, uh, the wicked, the wonder, and uh, other things that we've mentioned through, the, through this week. But if you'd like to get more of it, all you have to do is just keep scrolling down on the site that you're on right now, and you'll come to the ones day by day. And I think they'll be a blessing to you. At least I hope they will uh, with this theme of the wonderful rest of God. And God wants you to have that rest. He wants you to have peace of mind. He wants you to be able to lay down and sleep at night and be refreshed the next day. He, he doesn't want you to go through the day all stressed out and all worried and, uh, or all disgusted or all whatever else it is. He wants you to have that, that rest in your life where when people look at you, they just wonder, how can they be so calm in this ungodly day that we're living in? They claim to be a Christian, and yet as they go through the wicked world, they, they just seem to have that peace in their heart. You know, I've talked about this before, the, the, the joy, a smile on your face, the joy of the Lord in your heart, a spring in your step, all this kind of thing. I repeat that probably pretty often, probably more often than I ought to, but, but it, it ought to be a reality in our lives. Well, I'm thinking about being a witness for Christ. I want, I want you to listen to these last few verses of, of Psalm number 92. And I'm going to begin reading in verse number 12. The Bible says, the righteous, that's people who are right with God, saved and serving, the righteous shall flourish like a palm tree. He shall grow like a cedar in Lebanon. Ladies and gentlemen, God said, uh, God said I, I'm going to, those that are doing right, I'm going to help them to be successful in service of the king. Not 
king over in England or somewhere else, but the king of kings in heaven as we serve him. So he said, the righteous shall flourish like a palm tree. He shall grow like a cedar in Lebanon. Those that be planted in the house of the Lord. Are you planted in the house of the Lord? Do you find yourself on Sunday and, and if your church has a midweek service, uh, do you find yourself saying, man, I got to be there. I, I want to be like a permanent fixture at the house of the Lord. I, I want to be planted there. I, I'm, I'm going to be a consistent, faithful, godly church member. And he said, those that be planted in the house of the Lord shall flourish in the courts of our God. Because one of these days, he said, if, you've, if, you, if you're planted in the house of the Lord right now, when you get to heaven, you're going to flourish in the courts of God. Isn't that amazing? And you, it's a wonderful thing what God has, has for us. Look at verse number 14. They shall still, listen to this. Now, I like this verse. I, I love it. I identify with this verse. I, I believe it's true, and I claim it. They shall still bring forth fruit in old age. You say, you know, so many churches, so many of the people are just old people. And uh, you know what? They're some of the greatest Christians in the world. And the Bible says, old people, listen to me. Hey, all you old people out there, listen to me now. Listen, pay attention. God said, you're still going to flourish in old age. Don't use your age as an excuse. Use it as an opportunity. Let God use you. Maybe you can't maybe you can't go as far or as fast as you used to when you were a teenager or a young adult or whatever. And now you've hit that old age mark. You know, you're you're pressing on. You're the three score and ten, maybe four score. And and you say, Well, I just can't do anything anymore. Oh, well, yes, you can. I want to tell you this right now. Don't you don't you talk back to God like that. God said you're gonna flourish. If God was finished with you, he'd take you on to heaven. He's not finished with you yet. That's why you're still here. Flourish in the old age. Listen to what he said. <laughs> he shall flourish in the courts of, the, of our God. They shall bring forth fruit in old age. They, <laughs> this one, I don't, don't, don't want to identify with this too much. They shall be fat and flourishing. They shall be fat. Now, he's not talking about overweight. He's talking about Full. He's talking about you, you're, you're going you're gonna to have a, a sufficiency of everything that you need. God is going to supply your need. God's going to open the doors for you. God's going to be your strength and your help. And he's going to be your defense in times of trouble. And he's going to help you until he calls you home to heaven. And he said to show that the Lord is upright. He is my rock and there is no unrighteousness in him. Now, let me just read those, that, those verses together. Verse 12. On Psalm 92, the righteous shall flourish like the palm tree. He shall grow like a cedar in Lebanon. Those that be planted in the house of the Lord shall flourish in the courts of our God. They shall still bring forth fruit in old age. They shall be fat and flourishing to show that the Lord is upright. He is my rock and there is no unrighteousness in him. Oh, to show that the Lord is upright. You know what? When we continue on serving God, putting him first, even as we're getting into that, what the Bible calls old age, even when we're getting into that, that time of our life, God said, I want to use you. I want you to flourish. I want to, I want to use you for my glory and for, and for my honor. And I want you to be a witness and a testimony for me. God wants you, God wants me to be a witness for him. We need to be living it in our life. Oh, it's just like, well, they're just a grouchy old person. I don't want to be that grouchy old person. I just don't want to be that. I want God to be able to use me. Well, they're just, they just think they can't do anything. They just stay home. They just dry out and blow away. Oh no, I'm going to be fat and flourishing. I want God to use me. And I want, I want God to keep his hand on me till he calls me home. Now, when that, when that's time, we all have that appointment. We don't know what it is. We all have it though. And when my appointment comes, I'm ready to go. I'm not looking, I'm not looking for the undertaker. I'm looking for the upper taker. 
I'm ready to go paid up, prayed up, ready to go, serving God, living for him. One time I said, prayed up, paid up, ready to go. I got this couple of guys there. Oh, what do you mean paid up? You think you have to do something in a, or you can't go to heaven? I said, oh, don't, don't put words in my mouth. No, I'm saved. That's why I'm going to heaven. And that's the only reason I'm going to heaven. I, Jesus paid it all. I'm just talking about I'm prayed up and I'm paid up. I, I've tried to do everything I'm supposed to do up to this point in my life. That's what I mean. And I'm doing it not in order to earn heaven. I'm doing it because I love God. And I want to win others to him if I can. I want to be used of God. Well, let's pray together and we'll be gone. <laughs> Heavenly Father, thank you for the wonderful, wonderful joy of serving you. And thank you, Lord, that you give your servants rest. Lord, we have, uh, we're, we're, we're not just mentally and spiritually exhausted all the time. Lord, we have a fervency about us. We have a joy. We have a victory. And uh, Lord, we have a passion. And we want to see others come to Christ. So help us, Lord, whatever the age, whether we're young people, teenagers, uh, middle-aged, uh, middle young adult, senior adult, whatever. Uh, Lord, help us to be busy living for thee, being planted in the house of the Lord, and trying to get others there as well. And Father, we give you the praise in Jesus' name. Amen. <laughs> modern new world we live in today what by believers are thought of as strange they say we are living our lives in the past and without change or compromise we will not last but we're set apart from the world and its ways i gave up that old life the day i was saved i'll take the old Old time way. I'll take the old time way.